When I was growing up, I was reminded by my mother to avoid excess of hurry, worry and curry in order to lead a better life. When I did not follow her advice, I suffered and I immediately went back to this fundamental beautiful life lesson. I interacted with thousands of professionals and coached many leaders and I could make it out that most of their problems are emanating because they are using excess of hurry, worry and curry. They tend to blame external factors like toxic work environment, biased management, sabotaging co-worker, unpredictable market shifts and worsening industry situation. These are not in your control. But what is in your control is that you should not use excess of hurry, worry and curry. Now one question is asked, what do you mean by the word access? It is very easy to explain. Access of hurry means rushing. You are rushing without doing full justice to a job. You are rushing to complete a project. You are rushing from one meeting to another meeting. But the positive way of hurry is speed, speed of decision making, speed of execution, speed of thinking. Similarly, the negative aspect of worry is anxiety, where you are anxious about, you are fearful, you are feeling stressed, you are anxious to meet revenue target, you are anxious to onboard new customers. But the positive aspect is that you are concerned and when you are concerned, then you are going to take action, that you are concerned about the project completion, you are concerned about your sales target. Curry can be seen as a positive one when it is seen as a healthy food where a right quantity of spices are there in a recipe and you are indulging in moderation. But it could also be an unhealthy fatty one where you are taking an overdose much more than what your body need. Word is the same but it all depends upon the context in which you are going to use it and that determines your personal or professional success. So watch my video until the end where I am going to share symptoms and cure of excess of hurry, worry and curry. And if you have not already liked, shared and subscribed to my channel which is having more than 150 videos then please do it. Also watch my other video how to navigate office politics. Recently, I have also launched my custom chat GPT for plus users under the name of Utkarsh Rai Career and Leadership Tips All Levels where I have fed two decades of my work which is going to help you to solve work related challenges so you can use that one. So let's look into it. What are the symptoms and cure of when you take hurry as rushing things rather than taking it as a speed. First, you are rushing from one task to another task. You take some task, in between you leave it, go to another task, then you get distracted, then you go to the third task. By the time when you come back to the first task, already that completion time is over and you are under pressure. So the best thing which you can do is try to say no to the low priority work. Try to say no to the distraction and give reasons why you are focusing on this task and why you are not able to take another task at the same time. Don't feel shy, otherwise you will always be under pressure and you will be always rushing from one task to another task. Second, your quality of work will suffer when you rush from one task to another task because you have not done full justice to it and because of that your management will be after you why so many mistakes are there in the proposal or why so many bugs are there in the code. So that is why it is important for you as I said earlier that you need to try to complete the work much before time rather than keeping it for the last moment so that you will be able to get time to review it and by that time if somebody comes and asks for any request then you can always say no to them by giving the right reason. Third, when you rush you are not developing a meaningful interpersonal relationship with others because when you are rushing you are going and ask issue based question, any dependency based question with the other person and that type of relationship is called transactional. You are always in a habit of rushing so you are always building a transactional relationship. When you want to build a meaningful relationship you need to spend time. Now the question is where is the time for meaningful relationship you need to take time to build it. Upfront you are going to spend more time in building that meaningful relationship but later on even if you have any transactional need this meaningful relationship is going to provide you much more mental peace and also you will be much more happy that there is a transparency there is a trust among each other and then you will be able to focus it and you will not be rushing to complete it. Fourth, when you rush 
you are always in a complaining mode. Hey, I am having so much of volume of work or I am working 24 by 7 or I have been loaded with this much work and this complaining nature become part of your life and become part of your behavior which is not good for your career. Instead, there are many time management tips are available such like urgent, important and low priority work. You can put it in those categories and you can follow any other time management tips in order to avoid rushing. Once you avoid this habit of rushing, you are automatically going to gain speed which is going to help you in your professional growth. Now let's look into it symptoms and cure of worry which you have taken it as an anxiety and not as a concern. There are mental traps in your thought process which are leading to anxiety and we are going to discuss each one of them. First, catastrophe. Whenever we are getting excited about something, it means that we are thinking the worst possible case that I will be fired, I will be without job for a few months to a year, I will run out of money and these are the catastrophic events. Instead, if you really want to take it as a concern, then you should have a plan B. If this will happen, then this is how I'm going to activate my network. This is how I'm going to find a new job. This is how I'm going to upskill myself so that when you take action against any worry, it becomes a concern. But when you are just fearful and stressful because of the worry, it becomes anxiety. So avoid this catastrophe mental trap, which is going to hurt you much more. Second mental trap is looking things black and white. If I'm not going to get promoted this time, it means company does not want me. Now look into your past. How many times you have fallen into this mental trap and were always the cases of two extreme? You will be surprised to know that when you reflect, there are many things, many new situations come up in between because life is not black and white, but life is gray. And when the new opportunity comes, new situation comes, you have handled it with your own courage, with your own confidence and with your skill. So avoid this mental trap of thinking black and white, which is going to cause you a lot of anxiety. Instead, you can make it as a concern that, hey, in the past, when I face this situation, I have this strength and I have dealt it in this way. So in future also, I will deal it appropriately. Third mental trap is overgeneralization. You have made some comment, you have made some statement, you have made some suggestion in the meeting, but nobody really gave any heat to it. And then you will think about it. Hey, I'm a new hire in the team and nobody likes me. Now this is called overgeneralization. And most of the problems, most of the anxiety happens because of overgeneralization. Instead, you can think it as a concern. Hey, have I taken a step to start building relationship with few of those people? Hey, have I started looking and working together as a mentoring, seeking help so that I will be able to provide some of my initial suggestions to them and get some initial feedback. So this overgeneralization that everybody is like this, everybody is treating me like this, everybody is laughing behind my back should be avoided. Instead, you should take steps to build better relationship with other person and ask this question, am I a close person? Person. If yes, then take steps. Fourth mental trap is liking and praising. I should be liked. I should be appreciated. I should be praised. Now some of them require so much of validation and stoking that if they don't get it, they start becoming anxious. So let me ask a question. If someone in your team is like this, how is your reaction? Certainly you will not feel good about it. You will not like this behavior. So rather than asking for such frequent praise and appreciation, such positive strokes, it is better that you should start giving praise and appreciation to others. And whenever some praise and appreciation come at a right time, at a right moment, you are going to get much more happiness, but don't go after it. Now let's look into symptoms of curry as unhealthy food. We all love food. We love to talk about food, restaurant, recipe and cities. And there are four visible symptoms. Change and duration of quality of sleep. Overweight. Increased blood pressure, sugar or cholesterol level and laziness and fatigue. Most of the people think these are signs of aging, but it is not. I was also thinking like this and then at the age of 45, I became borderline obese and then I took fitness very seriously. One of the key part of fitness is that one should do mindful eating. I wrote my book, The Fitness Currency, at any age, at any stage, where I captured all my fitness journey together with tips how you can have mindful eating. But let me summarize four things for you. First, just observe in a week, how many hours do you spend in front of food? 
can you reduce one hour in a week just sitting in front of food and that is going to convert unhealthy eating habits to unhealthy eating habits second whenever you are eating just at a point just before you are going to feel full you should stop eating it because science says that the brain sends signals 20 minutes later that you are already full so you have to give a gap so that you should be able to know whether you are really full or not third in the past people used to cook food whenever they have a lunch time or breakfast time or a dinner time but now food is available 24 by 7 so why don't you have your own schedule of eating rather than eating snacking and munching all the time and fourth yes you can have one or two days in a week a cheat meal or a fatty food meal or an unhealthy meal and that will be okay for you so professionals you have seen how my mother's wisdom of staking hurry worry and curry in a moderate level as speed concern and a healthy food rather than as rush anxiety and unhealthy fatty food has helped me and this is also going to help you in your personal and professional life i hope you like this video do like share and subscribe to my channel thank you